Hello, welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and today we're going to delve into the energies of December 2020. Um, I've been really digging into the Akashic Records, both with my journal and in the studio, and just looking um, for insights into the energies, what's actually happening right now, as well as ways that we can, things that we can do to ease this time <laughs> that is so uncertain for, for so many of us. And there are definitely things that they have given me to help with this transition. So without further ado, join me and we'll talk about uh, the energies of December 2020. So before I start, I just do want to mention that there are so many variables happening right now and we're on you know, such a mishmash of timelines that I just want to ask you to please just take what resonates with you out of this video and leave the rest because we're all on a little bit different tra trajectory here. And I want to make sure that it is um, going to be serving you. So, in fact, that is one of the themes of this whole um, insights that are coming to me is that it's going to be super, super important to be listening more and more to your own, you know, your own higher guidance and, um, you know, not, not to any gurus or, or whatever. You, know, you, you can listen to what's happening and other people's perspectives, but it's always going to be about coming back to your own guidance and following that. Okay, so this is, of course, December in the Northern Hemisphere. It's like the darkest month of the year. And this, it does have a certain feeling of the darkness before the dawn around it. Although this, you know, that could be something that, that strings on for quite a while. Key word for right now is free will. Okay, it all boils down to free will choice. And one reason is that the, the timelines are super, super layered. Um, they're telling me that the words that came through are the veil is no more. Okay, so we are really getting to this point of um, you know, the spiritual world and the material world really, really coming together now, which is one reason things look and you know, the experiences that we may have may feel so surreal. And it's because you know, these things really are coming together. Um, now, depending on how you want to look at it, I, I think a metaphor that comes up a lot is the battlefield and this idea of the war between light and dark. And of course, that's one perspective to, to you know, see it, but it is a, a way that you can kind of understand what's going on is that we've got one faction that wants to keep us down and the other that really wants, is, is really looking to um, raise a vibration on the earth okay and but the thing to keep in mind is that we each of us has control over what goes on to our own in our own minds and that that is a super important thing okay the free will they're saying of each individual human being weighs in the balance each choice is precious it matters less the choice that you make and the state of mind in which you make it, okay? So they're saying it's really the choice is more the, the vibration than the actual, you know, physical choice that you make, right? Um, it's the vibration and, and how you're holding your own vibration, uh, your own resonance. So I asked for them to give me a symbol or a, an image to kind of help to figure out how to integrate these energies and they gave me a, a dragonfly okay so it was just a sketch i'll show you in my journal what it came through initially as just a, a dragonfly sketch there and then but then i went to paint it and it really filled out in a lot of details here okay so the things that are coming through and i may go back and forth between reading in the journal but i want to really focus on this image okay because first of all dragonfly itself is this this animal of transmutation and um you know change it lives most of its life down the muck right but at some point it becomes mature and it rises up into the light and this is a, a you know something that has to happen within each of us um 
that at some point we reach spiritual maturity and then we're up in this level of it just really rises above it all okay and the neat thing about the dragonfly first of all it's got this number four here which is a number of great stability and it's also a number associated with the angels okay so as we begin to reach spiritual maturity which has a lot to do with making the choices right it's a discipline um it we reach this place of greater stability and we're also able to call in a lot more light and assistance okay um and this is happening really on a collective level right now but then it also has to happen with each individual and there's going to be a lot of individuals that don't make that choice to rise up that they prefer to stay down in the muck right and so one of the things that i noticed about this is that first of all you can kind of see all this darkness Right, and then it's really trying to move up out of the darkness, but the darkness is kind of clinging to it, right? So we can look that, at this in a, a couple different ways. One, um, you can see the darkness as the negative energy um, with that kind of clingingness. And do you see how the, the, the dragonfly itself um, is moving up out of this? And in order to do so, it's really moving up into, not just moving up in the light, but it's holding onto that light, right? Um, you know, the sun and image right here. Um, we all have attachments and it's normal for human beings to, to need attachments, right? We, we need connection. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of, a, you know, we are part of the earth. We are part of um, spirit, right? And, and to have that attachment is important. But what happens is um, when we have that belief and separation from source then we start attaching to other things that's all this is is that energies or entities and beings instead of attaching to source which can include the the divine father which you can think of as like the symbolized by the central sun and the divine mother which is symbolized by the earth and the crystal core of the earth instead of attaching to that they've attached to somewhere else okay and when you're trying to get your sustenance that really ought to come from source which is your connection with your higher self and you're trying to get it from somewhere else that's where this vampiric energy comes from okay so we are moving out of that collectively but it's huge it's very 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 entrenched in the planet and so it is a um an individual and collective effort which calls for discipline and it calls for each person individually has to make choices you have to make the choice first of all to you know devote yourself to spirit to devote yourself to the higher self okay and but then each moment is also a choice because you know this stuff doesn't give up easily right and and so it's a constant constant having to make those choices over and over and over again and learning along the way because a lot of times we make choices that don't turn out to be what they we think they are okay and so another thing that's happening in here is that all this is caught up in illusion right um this this darkness it's all illusion and so there's going to be a lot of things that aren't what they seem all right so we may see see as many twists and turns in the plot as like a harry potter novel because <laughs> you know that's that's actually what's happening right here okay so moving back to this um the, the other thing that this represents besides the light is it's it's this beautiful yellow shape and it really calls to mind the solar plexus chakra right so this is the realm of power right but it's the power to choose a lot of a lot of strengthening of the solar plexus has to do with dissociating and figuring out your boundaries and cutting cords right so this is a time right now that you may find yourself having to define your boundaries um there's a lot of boundary kind of stuff going on even the mandates that are going on around here <laughs> are sort of a, a a way to kind of talk about boundaries right we're being confined to our homes and so forth and i'm going to leave you um leave it up to you to decide for yourself you know whether these mandates are 
kind of in service to the light or not. And they may be both, right? Because in these multiple timelines, it can happen that certain things work in certain ways that we don't anticipate. Um, but the fact is that we're, we're really looking at um, kind of defining what's, what's my space, what's your space. Um, and also in terms of all these timelines that are going on, keep in mind that we have, there are people that will choose to stay in the muck, to, to kind of align themselves with the, the forces that want to keep everybody down and that we need to be okay with that and just you know realize that that's a choice that they are making okay and that oh, everything that i've been given to understand is that collectively we have made the choice to go to the light okay so like it or not the whole planet is rising and that ultimately it's going to create um a, just a, a a much easier kind of world to be in a much more joyful world okay but in the process there's this split that's happening and that certain people are going to be in certain souls i should say because we may see a lot of innocence going down okay and that everybody needs to do what they're guided to do but if you do see loss of life or anything like that happening is that to understand that at the soul level there's a certain readiness that has to happen before you can go and and, and be on this higher frequency timeline okay um also that there are many many allies of light individuals and other people that we may all be going in the direction of higher vibration, but that not everybody is necessarily going to be going at the same rate, okay? And what does this mean? It means that even those people who are also allies of light, if you're, if you're aligning with the light and you feel that, you know, you're connected with people who are also on this path and this journey to the light, you may find that some of those relationships are not comfortable anymore. And it does not mean that those people are necessarily choosing the dark, but it may mean that either your kind of, your journey is a little bit uh, more accelerated or less accelerated than theirs. And there's absolutely no judgment here, but the only thing is to be aware of which relationships are right now feeling you know, good feeling like they're, they're uplifting you. Okay. And to recognize that if a, a somebody else that you relate, you know, in relationship to, it could be a family member, it could be friends, it could be a mentor, it could be a client, whatever it is. Okay. Um, if they're not, you know, if their rate of ascension is enough different from yours you might have been traveling along kind of parallel for a while and then if one of you is it's going to start feeling disjointed or there's going to be some tension or you know discomfort there and if that continues sometimes you can work through things but if that continues then for one they may be kind of feeling like they want to get it out let them go let them go and this is not a judgment on them or on you but it's okay to 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 let those relationships go they'll come around in time probably you know it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be the end so the more you can stay in your inner peace and allow things to to let go of you know whatever wants to leave your life without trying to cling to it any time that you feel yourself wanting to cling to something, turn that back to source, okay? Because we need to be really, the, the one thing that we want to be clinging to is the light, okay? And conversely, you may be feeling like um, certain relationships are, you may be feeling the drain, okay? Um, from certain relationships, these may be people that you love, they may be people that um, you feel are definitely on track for you know raising their vibration but if if it's if it's feeling draining to you at all do not feel bad about stepping back from that it may only be temporary but 
do whatever you can to keep your own resonance high okay um and then because they're they're telling me that um here let me just read this to you you are asked to be dispassionate to remove yourself from the distractions of the world to include relationships that pull at you let the world fall away there's nothing you can do to stop the fall it's safe to refuse to fall away with it and then they also warn against the this hero savior complex right you cannot save the world you can't even save yourself because there's really nothing to save only the opportunity to witness and in bearing witness to begin anew okay and they're saying that which is falling away is not retrievable no that said you know we can we can choose to kind of jump timelines for quite a while now okay so if the if things are falling some this way and some that way they're going to be sort of side by side for a while okay so that there may be a period of time where even somebody who's kind of far down here may suddenly make that decision and jump onto the ascending spiral right um I, I don't think a whole lot of people who are in the ascending spiral are going to choose to go down, although I suppose it's possible, but, but, you know, just keep, keep open the, the, you know, just keep in your mind, um, the potential for anybody who's on this lower, you know, descending spiral that they do still have that choice for quite some time now and that they can choose. Okay. So just hold the light for, for, anybody that you feel is you know going down don't look at them as victims and don't assume that they're they're going to end up you know just on that descending timeline but just hold the light and just visualize them hopping onto the the higher um ascending spiral okay that said that there are going to be people that uh choose that and it's just because they are not ready for the light and we've got to understand that that's their choice and not ours um and they say that your duty and your destiny is to stand unscathed and they liken it to like a pine cone in a forest fire okay um so there are certain pine cones like jack pine where the, the the cone is really tight okay and it needs the fire in order to break open and let the seed fall out and regenerate so that's partially what's in part of this whole dynamic here is that this this all the stuff that's happening all these energies are actually going to help a number of people to open up and you know be able to open their hearts right um in some way so i guess the last thing i, I want to bring forward is they're talking about radical self-forgiveness and self-love that's going to be super super important and to hold that in observer consciousness they say disengage yourself from other timelines disengage from false allies disengage from mass media disengage from, from thoughts of failure disengage from beliefs of illness and disengage from attachment to outcomes okay um we know ultimately the outcome is going to be you know we're going to send it into a, a better world but disengage detach from any idea of exactly how that is going to happen because there is no saying how it's going to happen and it all comes down to individual free will choice so there's many many ways that this could play out and as soon as you you know as soon as any of us thinks that it, we know how it's going to play out um <laughs> you know think you can because it could be very very surprising things it's going to be really really interesting to see how this all plays out um but ultimately it's really really hold your space and choose joy okay because that's the other thing that they're telling me is hold on to that spirit of play hold on to the joy okay because we can in any moment you know choose to um choose a higher vibration and this is what when i asked about this image with the with the dragonfly um this is what they told me uh, they said the transformation can happen very quickly and it's one of a triumph of mind 
over emotions and they say true illumination comes from above okay so when they say mind over emotion it doesn't mean logic versus emotion but what it does mean is that um, you know the emotions actually trigger action and we can with our consciousness really step back and feel into you know how we're going to respond to whatever's coming forward for us okay and again detaching also means don't assume that any one thing is good or bad in fact if you can suspend all judgment and just be in that observer mode that's going to be a lot easier <laughs> to get through this so if you can just stay an observer and just notice how your emotions move through um notice the emotions that come up don't try to numb them going to numbness is just going back down into the muck but if you feel emotions that are very strong coming up let them kind of flow through but then don't attach to those emotions because once you let them kind of flow then you can actually bring yourself back and turn things around remember that all energies are a um there's a polarity that it can go through so even emotions you can take that energy that manifests as an emotion and begin to turn it around into one that's more positive so you know if you get something that you're thinking you can start thinking okay what's the opposite of that and you jump on that timeline instead okay so super super important to stay aware of yourself and to really really um practice the discipline of awareness of turning your mind back to the light anytime it wants to get sucked back back down to the darkness turn it back to the light cling to that light and um you know things will eventually get better this could again it could be super quick okay what uh, and i'll share with you one last thing is that i'm getting this impression of lots and lots of little connections being made like if you think of a um kind of a, a big piece of machinery being wired together okay and there's all these little things all these little choices are like little connections being made little little wires being soldered soldered together and that once it reaches a certain point it's going to kind of reignite the engines and this whole thing can come roaring to life right it can happen very very quickly so even if it seems like this is the dark before the dawn sun can come up very very quickly um, okay, so I'm gonna. I'm not actually gonna offer this one as a print. It's just a little, little mini, mini painting. But I, I'm kind of getting the feeling there is one person out there that um, will really resonate with this uh, painting. That it'll be kind of meant as a meditation for that person um, and something empowering. So I'm gonna put this on my website and just uh, for sale for the original. So if that is you, the link is below. And other than that, uh, you just take it easy, uh, rest if you need to. And this, <laughs> that's one final thing is like, this is a process of bringing spirit into the physical. And so your physical body is a super, super important part of the thing. We need to really, really be supportive of our physical bodies because our physical bodies are needing to, um, it's like our actual DNA is changing in order for, just for us to hold more light. And if you are experiencing a lot of physical symptoms, and the regular just we all need to rest and hydrate and and really take care of ourselves but if that's not working don't hesitate to go find a body worker um you know a, a physical a person who can can help you work with the physical body whether it's a doctor or a um energy you know physical body worker whatever it is to to help because there are, you know, and make sure you find somebody who gets the spiritual aspect of it but you know wherever you're guided to go take care of that physical body all right so take care of yourself and uh keep turning to the lights have a wonderful december we'll catch you again soon